Happy Valentine. Sorry, I mean Happy Lent. I woke up this morning conflicted on how to greet you at the beginning of this homily. Whether to greet you with Happy Valentine or to greet you with Happy Lent. Some people caught this very early at the beginning of this year. Some commented that God certainly has a good sense of humor, while others said that this year is going to be a very interesting one, for God seems to be passing across a special message to us. And this stems from the fact that for this year, Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day fall on the same day, while Easter Sunday and April Fool's Day fall on the same day. Since 1945, this is the first time that Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day are falling on the same day, and Easter Sunday and April Fool's Day are falling on the same day. Regarding Ash Wednesday and Valentine, some Catholics have wondered whether a dispensation from fasting and abstinence would be granted today so that people may celebrate Valentine's Day to its fullness. Many bishops have officially written to their flocks to re prepare their minds on what is obtainable on a day like this. For example, Bishop Robert Baker in Alabama wrote to his flock saying, Out of respect for the importance of Ash Wednesday in the lives of so many, including our non-Catholic brethren, and the way this custom underlines the importance of the Lenten season at its outset, a dispensation will not be given. He went on to say that those who wish to celebrate Valentine's Day may fittingly do so the day before, that is, on Mardi Gras. And what an excellent idea to combine Mardi Gras celebration with Valentine's party. In conclusion, Bishop Baker said, The good Lord who suffered so much out of love for us will surely reward our fidelity and sacrifice. In spite of all the explanations above, I was still conflicted on whether to preach about Valentine or to preach about Lent on this day. In order to resolve this conflict in a just way, I decided to cast lots between Lent and Valentine, and I did it in a Nigerian way. On two papers, I wrote one Valentine, the other one Lent, and I began casting lots. Tinini, Tanana, Biko, Biko, and went on, but I was not satisfied with the outcome. I was still battling with this conflict when I came across a reflection by Bishop Emmanuel Badejo of Oyo Diocese in Nigeria. He titled the reflection, The Lent in Valentine. There he shows what Providence wrote long ago that has not caught our attention before now. My take home from the Bishop's reflection is that there is no conflict between Lent and Valentine, as the word Lent is at the center of the word Valentine. When we think of Valentine, we easily link it with the partying, the eating, the drinking, the exchange of gifts, and sometimes, unfortunately, even the immoralities that characterize Valentine's Day. Before God, there are no coincidences and nothing escapes God's attention. There must be an important message that God is out to pass across to us in this season of Lent that begins on Valentine's Day. 
as pointed out by Bishop Badajo. For central to love is the sacrifice of self-giving. Jesus says that no greater love can there be than to give one's life for one's friend. That is the kind of love we reflect on during this season of Lent. How Jesus Christ, out of love, sacrificed his life for us, his friends. He has also passed on the baton to us by saying, Love one another as I have loved you. That is the true spirit of Christianity. It is a life of self-given and love, and that is how St. Valentine lived his life. Bishop Badajo also reminds us that we still have many contemporary St. Valentine who are agents of genuine and pure love. Prominent on this list are mothers and their love for their children, beginning from the womb. Each pregnancy is a risk. Sometimes, prospective mothers are told that they have 50% chance of survival. They lose appetite, they put on weight, they lose sleep, some even lose their jobs for the love of the child in the womb. What baffles me the most is that they offer this sacrifice for a child who has done nothing for them. A child who might grow up to turn against them tomorrow. Think of teachers who teach students who will turn out to become richer than them tomorrow. Some of these students become politicians, legislators, and governors who will make unfavorable legislations tomorrow regarding these teachers or even refuse to pay salaries to these teachers tomorrow. Yet, these teachers continue to teach with love. Think of those who lay down their lives so that human rights can be guaranteed. Think of first responders, the military, the police, paramedics, firefighters, who are more concerned about the safety of others than theirs. There also are bound doctors, nurses, lawyers, civil servants, businessmen and women who work diligently without cheating others and sometimes making no material profits. Remember so many missionaries like St. Damien, the secondary patron of our parish, who left the comfort of his home to serve lepers and he eventually died of leprosy. These, according to the bishop, are true Valentine celebrities and for their sake, we can replace the merriment of Valentine with the penitence of Ash Wednesday. For each Valentine celebration is a call to holiness. That is why there is no better place to celebrate your Valentine than at the Mass, where Jesus gives his life for our refreshment. Can you imagine the intensity of love that brings about this great sacrifice? In a few minutes from now, we are going to put ashes on our foreheads with the words, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This morning, I saw some powerful words on the Facebook page of my friend Regina in this regard. She said, As we put on ashes on our foreheads today, let's put on flowers in our hearts too. Let the ashes remind us that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. And let the flowers remind us that our main vocation on earth is to love, and we shouldn't wait until we become dust, or others become dust, to show that love. And so, my dearly beloved in Christ, there is no conflict between Lent and Valentine. Remember that in the middle of the word Valentine is the word Lent. And so, I wish you all a happy and fruitful Lent on this Valentine.